And so what I'm going to do is use the insert edge loop tool right here, which I also have on a hotkey, but I'll use in the menu for now. So what this will do if you try it out on a, a polygon model is it gives you this little carrot shaped icon, turns your mouse into that, and all you have to do is select on an edge, and I'm holding down the left mouse button, and what it's doing is it's showing me a preview of where it's going to insert a row of edges. So if I leave it right there, it's created this, and I'm still in the tool. So I could continue clicking and dragging and putting edges down everywhere if I wanted to. I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to undo these. Um, so it works in any direction. So I could do this, uh, but that's not going to be so good when we smooth it. It'll cease to be a round uh, cylinder. So I want to keep with the rule of three if I can. So I'm going to drop one here and drop one here. And I'll just exit the tool by going to the translate tool, the W key. Go back to object mode. And then preview it. And so you can see we've achieved the result we wanted to get here by adding those edges. So from here it's pretty simple to understand what we need to do for the rest of the model. So we've got to hold down this one. Uh, in this case it's not so simple because the way this tool works, inserting edge loop tool, is it looks for square polygon faces and it cuts across them. When you're working with triangles like we are here, it's not so clear. So if I try to lay one down, it's going to start, but then it's going to stop right away because it doesn't know where to go. So I'm going to undo that. And instead of creating an edge loop here, what I'm going to do is select these faces using the shift button to select add and add to your selection. And I'm going to extrude this in. Go to scale and bring it in. So what that's done is just like before, uh, it creates that extra edge of uh, faces here. And that's just what I want because I want to get a edge on top, the edge that actually turns the corner, and then the edge underneath here that's going to hold it in place. Where both of these edges, right here and right here, are going to hold this one in place. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to scale it in a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to add a row of edges around this one because this area I would like to be rounded. So if I preview this now, looks like we're getting in business. It's looking pretty good. So now let's think about this top part. Uh, the base of the globe here should be held down. If you want to, you could almost think of it as like these two edges are preventing this one from moving anywhere. See? It's like they're holding them in place. Okay, let's look at that. Okay, so it's looking more like I would like it. You know, this uh, is still a little bit too thick for my preference here. I'm going to go into vertice mode and just deselect that. Okay, so this is something that could have screwed me up. See how I accidentally selected that extra vertice here? And notice that my manipulator is not in the middle. It's because it's putting the manipulator at the average of all of your vertices that you've selected. If I tried scaling this from here, it would be really disastrous. As you can see, it's trying to consider this extra one. Just undo that. So I'm going to use the Shift button and just deselect it by dragging the marquee. Okay, now I can scale this down a little bit more. Uh, not too much. And if we want to get fancy with this, you know, a tube is fine, but it might be kind of cool to have this kind of suck in a little bit and turn into this little tapered thing. So I'm going to go ahead and insert an edge loop here and here. Again, I'm just using this tool here. And now I'm going to grab these vertices and scale these in a little bit. So I'm going to shift, I mean, uh, sorry, control, select that top scale manipulator so that it doesn't uh, move anywhere. And just bring that in a little bit. So it's a minor difference, but these differences are uh, what add a lot of character to things like this. So it's got that nice sort of bow happening in the middle here. And how about we scale this up a little bit too? 
Oop. So this is a this is interesting. There's kind of a bug in Maya that happens sometimes. You can see that I still have some faces selected here, even though I'm in object mode. That's not supposed to happen. So if you want to fix this, what you can do is you can just go into face mode and deselect them yourself. Uh, and if that doesn't work, which it's not, what I have done in the past is just select all the faces and then deselect all the faces. There we go. So no software is perfect and that's just a bug that happens every now and again. Uh, as I was saying, if I want to make this a bit bigger, I can do that. I'm not going to worry about holding this down though because it's already completely flat. See? So there's nowhere for it to go up or down. There we go. This is looking more like a red wine glass now. Let's make it a really big wine glass. Okay. Uh, so far so good, but we got to address the top part. As you can see, there's no opening. And uh, there's a couple ways we could do this. We could select the faces like we did before. And instead of extruding outward, we could extrude inward. So we'll do Alt-E. Go to Scale with the R key. Bring it in just a little bit. And then extrude again. And this time start going down. Uh, but then that gets kind of difficult. If we go to wireframe, we could conceivably do this, right? We could bring this down, and we want to try and make it like a super thin piece of glass. But then I've got to eyeball it, and that just takes a lot of work. So uh, how about instead I'll undo that. And let's try deleting these phases. And uh, what we'll do instead <coughs> is something a bit more complicated. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to grab an edge here, and uh, there'll be a couple new things I'm going to show you in rapid fire here. So uh, just bear with me. But I'm going to grab this edge and convert it to a face path. So what I've done is I've just grabbed an edge here, and if you look on the uh, power pack toolbar here. There's a couple of hotkeys, convert to edge loop, convert to edge ring, convert to face path. So it's using the the uh, left and right direction of this edge to turn it into a face path, which is essentially just a ring of faces that connect to itself. And now I'm going to use the shift period button on your keyboard. That's a built-in hotkey that you should have too. And what that does is it grows the selection out. So it says okay I've got this selection what is what are my neighboring faces and select those two so I'll just do it one more time so we've got the entire bulb of the glass here and now I'm gonna go to a tool I think it's on the mesh menu I'll just open this one up too and we're going to extract and what that's done is it's taken those faces I had and it's broken it out into a new object altogether. So now we have two different polygon objects. Okay, so now that I've done that, let's just delete history on this stuff. See, so you've got this history building up. Delete that. Okay, so I'm going to go to the front view and just turn on wireframe, turn off shading, and I'm going to duplicate this object by saying control D. So if you look in the outliner here, it's called polysurface 2 at this point. I'm going to duplicate it so we have a duplicate object. And I'm going to scale it down. So right now the pivot point for this object is down here at the base, but I'd like to scale it from the middle. So there's a hotkey, uh, which I don't have on the menu right now. If you go to modify center pivot, it's going to take the pivot point of this object and just put it in the middle. Okay, so now that I've done that, I can scale this in. So that's good. So this is essentially going to turn into the interior of the glass. 
And this is uh, very convenient for me because now I have a duplicate of the outside that's exactly in line, so it has exactly the same distance all the way around. Maybe we'll just make it a little bit thinner by scaling it up a bit. And that's a lot faster for me than going ahead and manually doing it like I was started to before. So now what I need to do is select both of these objects and combine them back together. So we've got extract and combine. So now they're the same object again. And what I'm going to do now is I just have some open surfaces that I need to close. So what you can do is you can select the outer rim by double clicking and then shift double click the inner rim and we're going to use a tool called bridge so I'm going to open up the option box for this tool and uh, by default it should be set to five divisions we're just going to bring that down to zero and uh, I'll show you what that means so we hit apply and it screws up so sometimes <laughs> things aren't always going to work how you expect them to. Uh, let's undo that. Oh, you know why this is happening? Is because if you hit the, see if you go to lighting and turn off two-sided lighting, so here's the issue. Uh, the normals for this interior piece are facing inward, just like this one on the outside, but we want to fix that. Uh, there's a quick and easy way to do this. Uh, if you just go to the normal menu and say conform. Nope, that didn't work either because this is not actually uh, touching the other part. So let's do this by hand. Um, we're going to use the separate mesh command here. And what this does is it looks at your model and it finds any pieces that are not actually touching anything else and it separates them into their own object again. So it's the reverse of combine, basically. Okay, so now I've got this inner piece selected again. It's no longer a part of the outside piece. And let's reverse the normals. So go to the normals menu and reverse. There we go. So now the normals are facing inward like they should. So let's recombine this. I just shift selected that outside piece so they're well selected. And now let's double click the interior edge, shift click the exterior edge, and let's hope this works this time. Yes. Okay, so it did exactly what I hoped it would do. It just created a bridge, so to speak, of polygons between those two open faces, those two open edges. Now this tool is, uh, it requires that you have the same number of points along each edge. So if I had not had an extra point on the outside, this tool would not have worked. And the divisions that I mentioned earlier, we could uh, change it here. You can see if you add more or less divisions, it just adds those number of edges and divisions here. But we don't want that. We want to keep it at zero. Okay, so the last thing we have to worry about is, well, one of the last things we have to worry about is recombining it with the base here. So we have to combine. Now one thing it hasn't done for us is it hasn't merged those vertices together. So right now we have two open edges, which is kind of hard to see because they're sitting on top of each other, but I can actually pull them off and move them around here. So we have to use yet another tool called Merge Vertices. Or actually I think they just made it merge right here. So what we should do now is go into vertice mode. I'm going to go to wireframe. So we've got two rings here. This is the interior of the globe. And here's the bottom. So I'm going to select those two and just say merge. Now you'll notice that as I do this, that highlighting goes away. And that's actually a feature you may not have on your default version of Maya, but we can look at that. Um, it's in the preferences. You can toggle your border edges to be highlighted. That's what this is. Anytime a polygon object comes to an end, it has what's called a border edge. Okay. 
So now this is a nice closed surface. And let's just take a preview of this. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. One thing we should do though is lock off this top edge. So right now it's kind of smoothing down. And if you look closely at it, you can see that it's getting to be super sharp here because it, it's, it doesn't have any edges to tell it to be a hard edge. So let's go back into the Insert Edge Loop tool, which is on my hotkey. I'm going to put one there, there. So the outside edge has three. And then the inside edge also has three. And now if we smooth it, we're going to see that nice sharp edge, which is what we want. So the last thing is we've got this open patch down here at the bottom where we duplicated that surface and we want to close that off. So let's go and select all of these vertices using or holding down the shift button to do this. And then we're going to go to the merge options and we're going to dial this up. So this threshold basically tells the vertices to merge or not merge if they are within this distance of each other. So we can just change this to something like 10 for right now and hit apply and then it's going to merge all of those vertices down into one vertice. And now if we look at this with a sub D preview we've got a very nice looking wine glass. So that was a lot of information all at once and a lot of tools as well. Um, feel free to go back and watch this again and again if you need to and definitely model your own wine glass or something similar and uh, really get familiar with it. The key things to take away from this are again three edges will hold down uh, a corner or a crease or whatever and edges that are f uh, further apart are not going to. They're going to turn into nice smooth surfaces. Uh, the stem of the glass has a lot of edges close together but they're all uniformly spaced and they're perfectly round because we started out with that cylinder from the primitive which is mathematically sound. So we've got the bottom here. Um, other keys, uh, key things to remember, you can extract things, you can separate and combine things. Combine is when you take two objects and you make them into one. And they don't have to be touching, they could be two different cubes. Or three or whatever. And if you select them all and then combine, then they become one polygon object. And then we can separate these out again just by hitting separate. And then extracting is when you actually take faces from an object and then it rips it off into its own, own polygon object. Then we had merging vertices. So if we were to combine this back together, Maya doesn't know that it needs to merge these vertices together too. So we'd have that merge vertice tool. And then we've got the Insert Edge Loop tool, which will draw an edge loop around any surface that has uh, square edges that go into some sort of loop. Alright, get started and make your own wine glass.